The second collection is for the retirement fund for the religious. The funds help elderly religious by providing for medications, nursing care, and more. Thank you for your generosity in providing for those who have given a lifetime in service to God's people. Our Lady of Victory's parish penance service is this Monday, December 12th, beginning at 6.30 p.m. in the cathedral. The deadline for the OLV Giving Tree donations will be next Sunday, December 18th. The donation envelopes may be put in the donation box by the Giving Tree or placed in the collection baskets during Mass. As a kind reminder, we ask that you turn your cell phones to silent. Good morning and welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of Victory as we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exult the steppe will re rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble, make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be, fear be strong, fear not. Here is your God, he comes with vindication, with divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be open, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness, sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You too must be patient. Make your hearts firm because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory When John the Baptist heard in prison of the works of Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question, are you the one who is to come or should we look for another? Jesus said to them in reply, go and tell John what you hear and see, the blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written. Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The gospel of the Lord. What have we just heard in today's readings? We heard the words of the Holy Scriptures proclaimed to us. What now? To see it as a time management, we have successfully navigated into roughly a quarter of the hour that we normally spend celebrating the Holy Mass. What about the quality of the time spent? We could use a spreadsheet to track how our lives will be impacted by this hour. 
maybe we should ask the question, is it even necessary to spend the effort on this hour in the first place? We could be even more practical and resourceful. We spend many hours on a weekend cooling and heating, typically cooling more often. Many other hours are spent planning, scheduling, organizing, practicing, cleaning, spending on necessary things like wine and host, incense, flowers and decor, and the list goes on. But have these become such routine things that we are simply going through the motions? Why do we keep doing this week in and week out? What is our expectations? The question I started with just less than two minutes ago was what have we just heard in today's readings? Let me tell you, the people of Israel have been conquered by their enemies because they did not live up to their covenant with God. They had forsaken the God of their ancestors and are in exile from their homeland. Yet during this desolate reality, Isaiah gives them a message of hope that God will come to save them. And let's go back a little bit into last Sunday's second reading. It connects beautifully with today's. Last Sunday, we heard that the scriptures are given to us to teach us patience and encouragement. The promise of God will be fulfilled. Today, again, we are called to wait with patience for the coming of the Lord in glory. As the farmer who plants the seed waits with patience for it to bear fruit, so must we. Last week, we were told to live in one accord with one another so that with one voice we may glorify God. Today we are told not to grumble against one another. Do not fo focus on the faults of others and do not stand in judgment towards others. And like Jesus, we are to endure our sufferings at the hands of others by fixing our eyes on the coming of the Lord. It is better to bless and not to curse, to rejoice and not to retaliate. Today, Jesus is first addressed to John and his disciples, then to the crowd about the significance of John's ministry. John may have presumed that Jesus would continue primarily teaching the message of repentance and confronting the moral wrongs of the day and yet, he asks the question, are you the one who is to come or should we look for another? Are we surprised that John would ask such a question? Even before John and Jesus were born, John leaped in his mother's womb when his mother Elizabeth greeted Mary. John would later be preaching, make ready the way of the Lord, make his path straight. When Jesus presented himself to John for baptism, John protested. He said, I need to be baptized by you, and you come to me. Then after the baptism, the heavens opened, the Spirit of God descended like a dove, and a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. How can John question whether Jesus is the one who is to come. The reason behind John's question is found in his expectation of the Messiah. John warned that the one who was to come would baptize with Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand and he will thoroughly cleanse his threshing floor. He will gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And there are many other similar prophecies. John clearly expects a fire and brimstone Messiah. But Jesus has pronounced blessing on the poor in spirit, the meek and the peacemakers. 
He has called his disciples to love their enemies. He has warned them not to judge others. These teachings seem weak by comparison with the actions anticipated by John's fire and brimstone preaching. And furthermore, Jesus began his ministry in Galilee rather than in Jerusalem, the home of the temple and the center of religious authority, which probably added to John's questioning. Jesus worked a series of healings significant to those who were healed, but not necessarily significant to the nation as a whole. And it has been centuries since Israel has heard a prophetic voice other than John's. People are looking for a voice of authority, for a fire that will purge, and for a powerful leader who will restore Israel's former glory, and for a Messiah who will restore the people of God. John keeps watching Jesus, hoping to see fireworks, powerful rallies, and armies of empowerment. And we have much of the same expectations today. The church shuffles along, preaching mostly to the converted, sending help to disaster victims and charitable actions, shepherding a family through its times of grief, and teaching the faith to children and adults. All definitely good things, but it may not look like much. We may think that the church should be more like an urban renewal developer, tearing down and rebuilding shaking the very foundations. John's imprisonment raises further questions. If God chose John to prepare the way for the one who is to come, what is John doing in prison? If Jesus is the one who is to come, why doesn't he bring down fire from heaven on John's oppressors? Why doesn't an earthquake open the prison doors as will happen later for John or Paul and Silas? And why does God allow God's prophet to sit through long, empty days in prison? We have some of the same kinds of questions today. Why does God allow the righteous to suffer? Why doesn't God answer our prayers for healing? If we tithe, why doesn't God reward us with riches? If we attend church regularly, why doesn't God find us a job or a spouse? or whatever it is that we feel that we desperately need. But we must admit, we must admire John. He had a question about Jesus, so he approached Jesus as directly as he could through his imprisonment. He sends his disciples to ask Jesus if he is the one or should they look for another. It appears that John has doubts, but he seeks to learn what Jesus will say. John is open to hearing Jesus say that he is indeed the one. We also have that freedom to take our questions to Jesus. And like John, we need to be open to what Jesus will say to us. Jesus affirms the ministry of John as a prophet, not just any prophet, but the prophet who will come in the spirit of Elijah His mission was to prepare the way of the Lord and to point him out when he came. John is called to recognize the identity and ministry of Jesus. The people were called to recognize and honor the unique role John played in the history of salvation. So both John and Jesus were rejected because their passion for God's truth made people uncomfortable or even angry. When someone speaks truth or corrects us or tells us we need to make a change, our initial response might be that same kind of rejection and anger. Yet Advent gives us the opportunity to welcome Jesus by confessing our sins, apologizing to others, to being open to learning how to be holy. John may have presumed that Jesus would continue preaching a message of repentance and confronting the moral wrongs of the day. Jesus does preach repentance and calls for reform of one's life. 
and he takes it even further. He is a ministry of love and mercy, compassion and service towards those afflicted either by natural causes or spiritual bondage and sin. It's about bringing lives into order. Jesus identifies his mission as the one we heard in the first reading from Isaiah. He has come to save and restore. John was correct in recognizing Jesus as a Messiah. Yet perhaps it was his expectation about the Messiah that led him to the question of Jesus. Are we also wrong in our expectation of Jesus? Do we think the church should be more? Are we simply going through the motions, attending mass every Sunday or on the weekdays? Advent is still upon us. We still have time to return to the Lord. Let's prepare for the coming of the Lord. We can make this Christmas the most zealous, incredible, joyful, heart-awakening experience be in our homes, our community, and yes, our church. To do so requires us to be intentional in how we live these days of Advent. For truly, Jesus said to them in reply, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regains their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. What have we heard today? What we heard is what we should joyfully say as we go forth into the streets, the schools, our workplace, and in our homes, that you, O oh Lord, are the Messiah, and we believe. Come, Lord Jesus, come. I believe in one God. With all of our hope placed in our God who is coming to us, we offer these prayers and petitions. For the church, may we never hesitate to proclaim the good news in the face of conflict, poverty, and despair. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our leaders in government, may they respond to the voices of the voiceless, the poor, the homeless, the marginalized, the imprisoned, and the unborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for prophets in today's world who are maligned or persecuted for proclaiming difficult truths that need to be heard, may they be emboldened by the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for our candidates and catechumens, 
May they experience the hidden presence of the Lord in their lives during this Advent season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, may we employ eyes of faith so that we never lose sight of the potential for goodness in each other and in the world. We pray to the Lord. For the family of Jose Talamantes, may they be consoled by the Lord in their grief. We pray to the Lord. For the repose of the soul of Tomasa Rodriguez and for all the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. For the needs listed in our parish intention book and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, gathering together all these needs and desires, we lift them up to you, confident that you see us, knowing that you hear our prayers, and with every hope that you will answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving word through Christ our Lord. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with John the Baptist, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Brendan our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen.